Good day, people of the Internet Tubes. I'm Dave. And this one is called Jacob. And today we're going to be taking a closer look at the new AMD Raven Ridge APUs and just to see how they perform in the desktop. Spoiler alert, if you want a low-cost gaming PC with a serious upgrade path, look no further. Yes, these new AMD Ryzen processors with Radeon Vega graphics, to give them their full title, represent the first pairing of AMD Zen CPU architecture with the Radeon Vega graphics tech. That means they offer the possibility of building a budget gaming rig without having to plumb in a really expensive graphics card. So, can they live up to that promise? There are two Raven Ridge APUs available at launch, the Ryzen 5 2400G that costs $169 and the Ryzen 3 2200G that costs $99. Yeah, and that top end part, that 2400G, is a quad core, 8 thread CPU component uh, with simultaneous multi threading turned on, and it runs at a pretty speedy 3.9 GHz as its max boot clock. Now, paired with that is the Vega 11 GPU component inside it, which has got 704 GCN cores and runs at 1250 MHz. The 2200G, on the other hand, is a quad core part that runs at 3.7 GHz. That's got a Vega 8 chip in it, and that uses 512 GCN cores at 1100 MHz. The actual core makeup inside is quite interesting, as previous Ryzen CPUs used a pair of quad core complexes to make up their design. With the top end 8 core chips, that meant two quad core CCX communicating across an Infinity Fabric interconnect. With Raven Ridge, AMD have chosen to use a single CCX, which limits the amount of cache memory available, but they claim the trade-off is that some games won't suffer from the latency issues that come from talking across the connection. They've done this because it's cheaper and means they have the space to jam in those Vega cores. But it does mean we're unlikely to ever see any 6-core APUs in the future. AMD have also limited the number of PCIe lanes in the Raven Ridge chips too, with only a x 8 connection offered to connect up to a discrete graphics card. Again, it allows them to keep cost and complexity down, but with the mainstream GPUs, it's unlikely to ever be an issue. What might be more of an issue is the cheaper non-metallic thermal interface material used inside the chip. The temperatures displayed by the Raven Ridge chips bears that out. In terms of the platform, you can just drop them into any AM4 motherboard currently available. You will, however, just need to make sure you've had a fresh BIOS update to cope with the new chips. We have to admit to being rather impressed by AMD's APUs. The 2200G may be a bit of a slow coach, probably due to the fact it's a little low power to be a gaming chip, but the 2400G has a lot more going for it. Yeah, in terms of its straight CPU chops, it absolutely nails the Ryzen 5 1400 processor that it's replacing. And it doesn't get too far off the pace when you compare it to one of the old Core i7s from the last generation either. And when it comes to graphics performance, it hoses any other integrated graphics chip we've ever seen. Sure, at the highest 1080p settings, you're getting around 20 FPS, but if you're less ambitious about the settings, you'll easily get excellent gaming performance at 720p. And with the overclocking potential of the Vega cores at the heart, you can squeeze even more performance out of the Raven Ridge chips. We managed to get another 20% higher frame rates by pushing the GPU of the 2400G up to 1550 MHz. And because the CPU component is so good, and the halved by 8 PCIe connection is a bit of a non-issue, the Raven Ridge chips are as good with a discrete GPU plugged in alongside them as any equivalent Ryzen chip. Actually, probably better. The boost clock numbers are more important than they were with the Ryzen 1000 series because the new Precision Boost 2 feature is far more dynamic. Where it used to only push the max boost clock when just two cores were being used, now there is no core limit. It's just down to power and thermal headroom. That's especially important for us gamers, as with the previous version of Precision Boost, the boost frequency barely got used in-game. Despite being largely single-threaded, a lot of titles will offload a small amount of work onto separate cores, and this generally negated the benefits of the Ryzen feature. Not so with Precision Boost 2.0. The promise of AMD's APUs has long been to use them as the base of a cheap gaming PC with a modicum of gaming performance. You could then upgrade to a discrete GPU down the line. Unfortunately, the hobbled graphics cores they used to use meant that gaming was often an unrealistic expectation. And then the weak heart CPU cores meant that even if you did plumb in a decent graphics card, you'd end up limiting the performance later on. That's not the case anymore. Yeah, you're not going to get high-end gaming performance from an APU alone, but it's a pretty good first step and a tempting prospect for a builder. You'll get good 720p frame rates, and sometimes even at 1080p, especially with the GPU overclocked. And when you can afford one down the line, you won't be hobbling a new discrete graphics card because the CPU component inside the Raven Ridge chips is so good. 
Obviously, the $169 2400G is the better chip, but for less than $100, the quad-core 2200G will make for a decent gaming CPU, even if you have to knock the game settings down more to play with a dedicated graphics card in place. There are caveats, however, and that comes down to the platform as a whole. Our test kit's mini-ITX motherboard isn't cheap, but you can get B350 boards for well under a ton. The real problem, however, is the memory. Without the HBM2 of the RX Vega cards, the GPU at the heart of the Raven Ridge APUs desperately needs speedy RAM to be able to perform at its best. The memory AMD supplied us with is a 3200MHz kit that costs over $260, and at that speed you get the impressive gaming performance. Make the switch to a cheaper 2133MHz kit and you're missing out. That makes building a budget rig a lot tougher. The whole AMD review kit we've got runs to around $600, and that's before you add in a chassis, PSU, operating system, and storage. That's the only real downside for the new APUs though, and honestly, they're the first AMD APU that we'd ever genuinely consider building a gaming rig around. With the low-end gaming potential that they offer, that means you can start small, but with the knowledge that there's a fantastic upgrade path when you can afford to make the step up to discrete graphics. So that's our take on AMD's Raven Ridge APUs. Yeah, they've made a pair of great value, impressively versatile gaming chips, and they're more relevant than ever in these graphics card lacking times of ours. So if you like what you've seen and heard, then give us a like and subscribe, and check back for more gaming and hardware goodness in the future. Yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.